All right, I'm getting ready to make a chicken and sausage gumbo. Right now, I have, uh, I'll be doing this outside. Here's my little setup. I got my double burner, actually it's a triple burner. Um, got my black cast iron uh, Dutch oven. Right now, I have three quarter cups of flour and a half cup of vegetable oil. I'm gonna start the roux by uh, turning this on, getting the pot going. Let's see if I can do this while I'm holding the phone. And of course it ain't gonna work. And I smell gas. I'll be right back with a, a match. And let's try this again. I just took a picture. All right, ready? Here we go. On and clean. Woo! I hope I got that. That's what happens when you let the propane run too long while your lighter ain't working correctly. All right, so we're going to put this on a kind of a, a medium heat. You don't want it too high. So I'm going I'm to lower it. It's about right there. And I'm going to add <clears throat> my flour to start with. All right. And then we'll get that toasting. So we're going to start mixing this around. Let's toast it first. Give it a minute. And then we're going to add the oil after about three or four minutes. All right, once I start this process, I can't stop. So whenever I come back, I'm gonna be adding, this is a uh, Guidry's Fresh Cuts. Uh, it's saying it's 16 ounces of cut. That's uh, chopped onions, celery, and a little bell pepper, and I think a little parsley. So anyway, um, I'll be doing this outside in the backyard on a somewhat rainy day. I gotta keep this flour moving. So I'll keep doing this till I add the oil. So you do this first, it toasts it up, it helps it get to the browning stage quicker. But when you do this, you don't wanna do it on a high heat. I don't, I do it on a medium high heat. And then when I get it to the color I want, I go to low and then I add the vegetables. Cause this temperature will continue to rise. So know that. Whew, it's humid today. It's raining. Uh, today's election day. I got out and I voted early. Um, I was lucky. There was no line when I got there. So I was thinking there was one woman ahead of me. And then there were two voting booths. So once she got signed in, I got signed in and it was all good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add the oil and I'm going to cut this off. All right, I'll see y'all when the vegetables are in. All right, at this point, I'm almost ready to put my vegetables in, but not just yet. I'm still gonna keep stirring. It needs to darken up just a little bit more, but right now, it's coming along perfectly. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, stir it up one more time. And I probably could go a little darker, but I don't feel the need to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add the veggies listen to this sizzle it's be a nice sizzle and the veggies will stop the cooking so it'll stop the cooking process so that the roux doesn't burn or get any darker so I'm gonna stir these up for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna be adding some garlic and then some tomatoes so I'll be back in about 10 minutes all right, so as you can see, they've cooked down, they're, they're rather soft. Um, they've got the good incorporation with the roux. What I'm gonna do now is um, highly controversial down here. You have your uh, Cajuns and your Creoles, and uh, your Cajuns don't use a tomato based pretty much for anything, and Creoles do. And I'm kind of in the middle. I did add a little Tony seasoning to the vegetables while they were cooking. So this is one can, 14, uh, I need to, all right, one can, 14 and a half ounces of diced tomatoes. I'm gonna add it with the juices. Now I'm gonna give it a stir and kind of incorporate that tomato juice in. You'll see the roux kind of thicken up. And then I, behind me, I have 
the okras, and that's another another topic of debate. But there there are two types of gumbo, and I, if you go down my YouTube list, you'll see I've watched. I'm gonna go ahead and put the chicken broth in right now, a little bit at a time. Three and three quarter cups of chicken broth, room temperature. If it's hot, it'll break up the, the roux, which you don't want. So it's a big topic of controversy when it comes to arguments all over the place down south about gumbo. What makes a gumbo a gumbo? Is it the roux? Um, is it just that you're throwing a bunch of ingredients into a soup? Um, and if you look at cookbooks, if you look at the history of gumbo, gumbo is named after the African word for okra, okay? Well, okra's not available, or back then, it wasn't available year-round, so they also use the sassafras leaves to make a filet powder, the filet powder, they dry them up. So you could either have a gumbo, which is a roux-based stew with fresh ingredients, local ingredients, whatever, chicken sausage, it could be shrimp and it could be crab, it could be, it could be lobster and frogs. But in order for it to be gumbo, it has to have okra, or it could be a filet gumbo with the filet powder. You, you, know, you can't have a Caesar salad with ranch dressing. Part of what makes a Caesar salad a Caesar salad is the Caesar dressing. So you can see them bouillon cubes and they're not completely mixed in. But um, I'm gonna finish incorporating this. I'm about to add, once I get it, see how it's kind of thin? So I'm gonna get it to where it's thickening it up. I'm actually gonna turn the fire up because I'm not worried about burning it no more. So let me, I'm cooking on the wrong side just because the table's on the other side. All right, so let's turn this up a little bit. All right. Now we're gonna bring this to a boil and I'm going to go salt and pepper the chicken. Like I said, I got some boneless, I got two pounds of boneless uh, chicken thighs, boneless skinless chicken thighs that I'm gonna put in here. And then I've got a pound of Manda's sausage. I'm gonna open that with my mouth. So. I got a pound of sausage. This is one pound of cut okra, Winn-Dixie style. And uh, we'll incorporate all these ingredients here, get them to a boil, then we'll lower it to a simmer. And uh, I'll be back whenever I get the uh, chicken. I'm about to put the chicken in, which is gonna be right when it comes to a boil. All right, so in my haste to film, I forgot to include the beautifully fresh chopped garlic. So, it ain't gonna hurt it if I just throw it in now. So, in with the garlic. It's almost about to a simmer. So, I'm about to put, I'm gonna lower the heat now and put the chicken in. Lower it a little bit. All right. Might be too much. Raise it up a little bit. All right. There we go. So, the garlic's in. Um, I'll be back with the chicken. All right. So, I've got. This appears to be six boneless, skinless chicken thighs, um, seasoned with salt and pepper. If you ever watched the Paul Prudhomme boring uh, show, like I got my New Orleans Saints 50th anniversary towel, got that from the game the other day, but uh, I got these in case I need to season it. I got salt and pepper inside. Still hasn't come to a boil yet. As soon as it comes to a boil, I'm going to put the chicken in. And then let that cook for 30 minutes, and then I'll add the sausage, and uh, it should be almost ready. We'll let it cook a little while, you know, uh, probably total cook time once I put the chicken in. Because right now it's cooking, it's been almost 20 minutes, so you're looking at a couple of hours. Um, nice little, and look, my, my little kitty, she's outside with me. I found her on the interstate heading towards Houston. She was walking on the shoulder. She was about five, six weeks old. And uh, she wasn't gonna last much longer out there. So I pulled over and I picked her up and that was about a year ago and she's the sweetest cat. She's not allowed outside, but since I'm out here cooking, she can stay in the backyard. But, all right, I'll be back when I put the chicken in. All right, looks like we have uh, some boiling going on. Oh, and uh, meet this one. This is a, a new kitten that just showed up to the house. I'm like the cat whisperer. He's kind of wild. And, won't let me pet him, but uh, he just showed up too. So now it's time to add the chicken to the recipe. I'm just gonna do two by two. Pick it up like this, hopefully it won't fall. 
All right, put the chicken in. Make sure they're not touching each other. They got room. I can come over here and get this one. Put it in there. I guess it's easier to do one by one. It's starting to smell good. All right. So all the chicken's in. I'm going to look at the clock. I'm going to give it 30 minutes. I got the sausage already cut up. It's inside. So I'm going to bring it back to a boil, which it looks like it's there, or at least over in this corner it is. I'm going to bring it back to a good boil, then I'll lower the temperature. And uh, I will be back, and I will see you in 30 minutes, and hopefully I'll have uh, petted that wild kitty by then. But as you can see, another thing I want to point out, as you can see, it's not a dark, it's not the color of what a gumbo should be, but that's what I got the kitchen bouquet for. Right now, it looks at the consistency I want. It looks like I might need to add a little bit of water, so I got water on hand in case I need to, but right now, I'm going to let it simmer for 30 minutes, um, and I do want to finish. I, I don't know if I finished the Paul Prudhomme story about his boring show, but if you watch his boring show, um, you learn one of the things that he, he taught when he would uh, do his cooking is that you season at every step. So whenever I was doing the vegetables in the roux, I added some seasoning to the vegetables. I seasoned the chicken and I'm putting it in. That way you don't over season. You can always add seasoning at the end, but it's good to season as you go. I haven't added really any salt to the gumbo because I had the bouillon cubes in there and that's going to add some saltiness. I'll taste it later. I probably will have to add some salt, but as of right now, I'm just going to let it do its thing. Give it 30 minutes and I'll be back. Um, all right, it's been at a simmer for 30 minutes, so I'm about to put some sausage in. But when you cook it in the backyard and, uh, you know, you, you release the smells, I'm not going to show your face, but you get the neighbor come over with his yingling. So uh, he could smell it. He came over. We're back here having some beer while we cook this uh, gumbo. Again, it's not to the darkness that I want it. So I will uh, add the kitchen bouquet. I might add a little Worcestershire. I might add a little Louisiana season, and I haven't tasted it yet, but it smells delicious. Oh, I moved the sausage over here because the little baby kitty, the wild baby kitty, was going to eat it. But now I'm going to put the sausage in. Whoop. And I'm still debating on whether or not to put the two pounds of shrimp in that I bought to go in here. So uh, I might have to go consult with uh, neighbors, family members, and see what they want. At this point, I should probably take out the chicken and cut it up into bite-sized pieces. Uh, I'm going to hold out. I think if we cook it a little bit longer, that chicken will um, kind of get fork tender where I can just pull it apart later. Um, and that'll be fine too. But uh, right now... Uh, I'm going to let this go for another, I'm going to bring it up to a simmer or a boil, lower it to a simmer and uh, do it for another 30 minutes and I'll make a decision in that time about the uh, shrimp. Alright. This, this season I have a problem. That's fine. We're talking about LSU football. We got our butt kicked by Alabama. Well, we didn't get our butt kicked by Alabama, but we lost Alabama. So I'm going to add a little Worcestershire just to give it a little flavor. And a little Louisiana hot sauce, not to make it hot, just to give it a little flavor. Uh, Louisiana is a milder hot sauce. I like Crystal as well, but this was just the first one I grabbed. Uh, I probably need to hit it up with a little salt and pepper. I'm going to hit it up with a little Tony's right now. Um, it's got about 15 more minutes at this stage before I decide whether I'm going to put the shrimp in or not. Um, but so far, so good. It looks delicious. It smells delicious. It should taste delicious. All right. And I guess that does it for the Tonys. I, I get forward to looking to uh, buying some new ones. I cooked a gumbo a couple weeks ago at my sister's house. And my brother-in-law, he has these gigantic, these gigantic tubs of Tony's seasoning that he got from uh, Costco. So I, don't, I haven't been to Costco yet in Baton Rouge. But um, it was a, a gorgeous container of Tony's seasoning. So... If you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend it. Um, it'll last you forever. And uh, Tony's is, uh, it's a very consistent Cajun seasoning. It's a little on the salty side. So sometimes I prefer Slap Your Mama or Slap Your Mama with a white pepper blend or the Louisiana Fish Fry seasoning. They're all good. You can't go wrong. Um, 
I've kind of gotten to the point where I'm, I'm mostly a salt and pepper guy, but if I got Tony's laying around, I'll use it. So uh, we'll be back. Uh, we're coming down the home stretch. It's looking good. All right, so we're coming down the home stretch. I'm going to add a little kitchen bouquet to give it that dark color. I'm doing this outside with this flash. Let me see if the flashlight will give it a different uh, texture. So I got my other, I got my other mean white cat. He showed up. Look at him. He's spraying. That's why he's not allowed in the house. There's a little kitten. He's gonna try to play with the mean white cat, but the mean white cat runs away. So that's bonus footage right there. All right. So here we go. We added simmering. It don't make a difference. Um, a decision was made on the shrimp not to use it. The shrimp will be used in a seafood gumbo to be cooked later. All right. This is a. Um, kitchen bouquet browning and seasoning um in the grocery store it's by the gravies you know if you have like a gravy section um that's my preferred they have other different types but this one's my favorite one so i'm gonna show you when i stir it up the difference it makes all right so this is a browning seasoning i'm gonna stir it up now it's gonna give the gumbo Oh, look, it's almost like I made a dark roux, except I didn't. I might add a little bit more. And it does give it a little flavor. It gives it a delicious flavor, actually. So, if I had to say one of the secrets um, to what I think is a very delicious gumbo, would be that I add the kitchen bouquet and make the roux not so dark. where it has a uh, where it has a burnt taste I just don't like that burnt taste in a roux so let me stir this up one more time and then uh, this should be it I'm gonna let it cook for a few more minutes and uh, we're gonna call this a day this is uh, looking delicious and this is this regular old chicken and sausage gumbo for election day all right let me record all right so my phone's running dead so i'm gonna have to wrap this up um i added the kitchen bouquet um i'm only gonna let this simmer for a couple more minutes unfortunately you won't be able to see it plated up but uh i've tasted it it is delicious anyway give it a try